As an Archon, you rule the Void and the Shadows. You were born from the Dark Secrets, imbued by Zalatath, and even now she continues to whisper to you. Psst. I see dead people. Hey everyone, Two Angry Frogs with our latest class guide, and we're walking through the Shadow Priest Archon Hero spec. We'll get you up to speed on the talents, rotations, and other important things to know for this spec, and stick around for the Two Angry Frogs ranking for Archon Shadow Priest. With the Archon Hero spec, it's all about Halo. It is interesting that Halo was chosen as the key ability for the Hero spec, given how greatly Shadow Priest centers on Void form. But for the Hero talents, at the top of the tree, we have the talent Power Surge. This creates two additional Halos when we cast Halo. Then with Manifested Power, each of the casted and created Halos grant a charge of Surge of Insanity, which we build to activate Mind Flay Insanity. We have two talents that buff Mind Flay Insanity. The first, Empowered Surges, increases the damage, and the second, Energy Cycle, summons Shadowy Apparitions when we consume Surge of Insanity with Mind Flay Insanity. Finally, Divine Halo causes casted and created Halos to return to us after they have reached their maximum range, generating Surge of Insanity stacks and damaging enemies on their return as well. Then we jump over to Power Infusion Void Form, with Concentrated Infusion granting additional haste, and Perfected Form granting increased Void Form damage. Sustained Potency ties the two sides together, which causes Halo to extend Void Form by one second, or store up to six seconds to be used on the next cast of Void Form if it is not currently active. For our three choice nodes, two are utility-based, we typically will go with Word of Supremacy to buff our Power Word Fortitude and Incessant Screams. For the final choice node, we take Sustained Potency for Single Target for more Void Form uptime and Energy Compression and AoE for the increased Halo damage. Our Single Target Talent selections center around using Devouring Plague to generate Surge of Insanity procs and Empowering Mind Flay Insanity. In single target, we want to cast Mind Flay Insanity as often as possible due to the strength of the Empowered Surge's hero talent. For Devouring Plague, we pick up Mind Devourer, which gives Mind Blast a chance to make Devouring Plague cost no insanity, and Mind's Eye, which reduces the insanity cost of Devouring Plague. We also take Void Torrent with Malediction to generate a large amount of insanity over 15 seconds during the rotation for more Devouring Plague casts. In cases where we have a single target with adds, we can pick up Shadow Crash with Misery to apply Vampiric Embrace and Shadow Word Pain to multiple enemies within a single cast. Shadow Priest is a builder spender type class. We build up insanity with abilities like Vampiric Touch and Mind Blast and spend insanity on abilities like Devouring Plague. Our single target rotation centers around generating insanity quickly to cast as many Devouring Plagues as possible. This in turn generates Surge of Insanity procs, which are used to buff our Mind Flay Insanity cast. For our opener, we'll cast Shadow Crash if we have it talented. If you need to save Shadow Crash for early adds, then use Vampiric Touch. We'll cast Shadow Fiend, cast Mind Blast twice, cast Halo, which will generate Surge of Insanity procs, increase damage done to enemies, and store time for Void Form. Cast Void Eruption to go into Void Form. Cast Power Infusion for a big boost to haste while we are in Void Form. Cast Void Bolt, cast Devouring Plague, and then cast Void Torrent to generate a large amount of insanity. As we go into the rotation, we want to make sure that we are maintaining Vampiric Touch and Shadow Word Pain to keep our damage over time running on the target at all times. We want to be in Void Form as much as possible and pair this with Power Infusion for our big damage burst window every two minutes. So for the rotation, we'll use Shadow Crash to reapply Vampiric Touch and Shadow Word Pain, or Vampiric Touch if Shadow Crash is on cooldown. Cast Void Eruption to enter Void Form whenever possible. Cast any available Mind Blast charges before entering Void Form. We'll also cast Power Infusion since Void Form and Power Infusion line up on the two minute cooldown. Cast Void Bolt to generate insanity, cast Devouring Plague, cast Mind Flay Insanity. If possible, wait for three or more stacks of Surge of Insanity to cast this. 
Cast Void Torrent to generate insanity. Cast Shadow Word Death if the target is below 20% health. And cast Mind Flay if you have nothing else to do. You'll want to interrupt the channel of Mind Flay if you can take any other action at all. For our major cooldowns during the rotation, we'll cast Shadow Fiend when it's available, and we'll cast Halo when it's available. For AoE, we pick up Shadow Crash with Whispering Shadows to easily apply Vampiric Embrace and Shadow Word Pain to groups of enemies. We drop the more focused single target talent Malediction and pick up Idol of Nazoth at the bottom of the tree. This gives our Shadow Word Pain a chance to apply Echoing Void on up to four enemies, which does additional AoE damage when it collapses. Depending on what you need more of, you can focus the build on more single target damage by taking Mind Devourer or more AoE damage with Maddening Touch. Our AoE build can do good priority in single target damage along with great AoE, so it is a good build for lower level Mythic Plus and Delves. With our AoE rotation, we want to maintain Vampiric Touch and Shadow Word Pain on as many targets as possible. The Shadow Crash ability helps a lot with this when enemies are grouped together. The interesting thing with Shadow Priest is that Psychic Link spreads damage across targets passively, so the AoE playstyle does not differ significantly from the single target. For our opener, we'll cast Shadow Crash. You can dot individual enemies with Vampiric Touch as the enemies are being grouped together. We'll cast Shadow Fiend, cast Mind Blast, Cast Halo, which will generate Surge of Insanity procs, increase damage to enemies, and store time for Void Form. Cast Void Eruption to go into Void Form. If the enemy pack will not live long enough to take full advantage of Void Form, at least 20 seconds, then skip this. Cast Power Infusion for a big boost to haste if we've cast Void Form. Cast Void Bolt, cast Devouring Plague, and then cast Void Torrent to generate a large amount of insanity. For the AoE rotation, we look to cast spells on an enemy affected by Devouring Plague. When hitting a target with Devouring Plague and having Psychic Link, all of our direct damage spells hit all other nearby enemies for 25% of the damage. With Mastery Shadow Weaving and the talent Insidious Ire, our damage is further increased on targets with Devouring Plague, which in turn increases damage to all nearby enemies as well. So for the AoE rotation, we'll use Shadow Crash to reapply Vampiric Touch and Shadow Word Pain, or Vampiric Touch if Shadow Crash is on cooldown. Cast Void Eruption to enter Void Form whenever possible. Again, cast any available Mind Blast charges before entering Void Form. We'll also cast Power Infusion since Void Form and Power Infusion line up on the 2 minute cooldown. Cast Void Bolt to generate Insanity. Cast Devouring Plague. Cast Mind Flay Insanity, and again, if possible, wait for three or more stacks of Surge of Insanity to cast this. Cast Void Torrent to generate Insanity. Cast Shadow Word Death if the target is below 20% health. And then cast Mind Flay if you have nothing else to do. As with Single Target, interrupt this channel if you can take any other action at all. For our major cooldowns during the rotation, we'll cast Shadow Fiend when available. Cast Halo when available. So as we see, our single target and our AoE rotations are pretty much exactly the same outside of a couple of very minor adjustments. For Archon Shadow Priest, Intellect is paramount. Higher Intellect on higher item level gear is almost always better than the particular spread of secondary stats on the item. Beyond that, we can use the following as a general guideline. For the most part, we want to be stacking Haste and Mastery. Haste is very valuable for Archon due to reducing the global cooldown, which impacts a large portion of our abilities. And Mastery buffs nearly every ability due to Mastery Shadow Weaving, which is particularly effective when you are in Void Form. You don't want to forego Critical Strike completely, but it is not as important as we see with many other classes and specs. For Season 1, we have the Living Luster Tier Set. Two pieces increases the duration of Devouring Play by one second, and with four pieces, Devouring Plague increases your damage dealt by 2% for 10 seconds, and this effect can overlap multiple times. So how does the Season 1 tier set fit into Archon Shadow Priest? Because Devouring Plague is such an important ability in both single target and AoE, we get a decent buff to our DPS in both types of encounters. 
Our four piece tier set equates to approximately 5% increase in damage for both single target and AOE. So how do we rank up Archon Shadow Priest? For the visuals and playstyle, we give it a three out of five. Visuals wise, there isn't a whole lot to be said. Lots of expanding and contracting circles with Halo, but not a lot more that's new. Shadow Priest has always had great visuals by default, but playing into the void form aspect could have been really cool. For ease of play, we give it a three out of five. Basically, once you learn the single target rotation, the AOE rotation just becomes an extension of that. In AOE, we do need to keep track of devouring plague targets and ensure to apply devouring plague on enemies that will live long enough to ramp up our AOE damage. Casting devouring plague on the wrong enemy can completely tank your AOE damage, so it does take some quick thinking in that respect. For single target, we give Archon Shadow Priest a 3 out of 5. It is in the top third as far as range DPS is concerned, but it still does lag behind Mage and Hunter. Shadow Priest DPS in general can be hampered by movement, which can significantly affect our damage. And this is not really great for a lot of the raid bosses in Nerebar Palace right now. For AoE, we give it a 2 out of 5. Due to AoE damage being so strongly tied to single target via Psychic Link, both damage types rise and fall with each other for the most part. We don't really have pure multi-dot AoE damage outside of Shadow Crash, but rather rely on Devouring Plague and Psychic Link to spread damage. Single target and AoE damage has improved slightly due to recent buffs, but if we're looking forward to patch 11.0.5, there's very little coming our way, so we don't expect any big changes in the near future. So that is Archon. A fun spec to play, but needs some help. However, based on 11.05 patch notes, it does not look like the help is coming anytime soon. As always, depending on the level of content you are playing, pick what you like and don't fret over anything else. As a solo player, you will still be completing Tier 8 Delves, and any world content you want. But for higher level Mythic Plus and rating gameplay, it may prove a little more difficult to keep up with the pack right now. As always, let us know your thoughts and any questions you have down below in the comments. And make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you always know what we're up to next. And everyone, have a great day in the void.